This is lesson 42 of the Quantum Mechanics, a mini lecture series uh, titled A Simple Quantum System Part 1. So having gone through some of the basic maths, I thought I'd now get into the nitty gritty of um, the quantum world, quantum mechanics. So I'm going to draw a sketch of spinning top. So this is the best possible sketch I can do. This is like a retro spinning top. Um, and it turns out that some of us as kids, we're more or less experts for when it comes to understanding the mechanics of a spinning top, right? If you, if you spun it um, in this configuration here, then you were spinning it in what's called a de spin down state. Spin down state because it's pointing down. If you spun it in the opposite direction, you'll be spinning it in a spin up. You'll be, you'll be configuring it into a, a spin up state. Now in this case, state just means all the possible info, all the possible information, possible info that could be known could be known about the object. Okay, the spinning top in this case. So we can then therefore conclude that there are two maximum states. Okay, two maximum states uh, the spinning top could be in. Okay, it could be in spin up, a state called spin up, or a state called spin down. These are just names and nothing in between, right? Now, and this spinning top provides a great example of the the way everyday objects behave okay on the macroscopic scale the big largest largest of scales they um the the way they behave is determined by certainty okay um in other words there's no mystery in how the spinning top would behave if you were to spin it in one direction or another okay let's now move from this macroscopic large scale of every, everyday things into the scale of atoms and subatomic particles the microscopic scale so if you remember from high school science lessons, um, atoms are made of tinier particles called electrons. So I'm going to take the simplest of atoms, a, a, um, a hydrogen atom. It's got one proton and one electron. Okay, And you can think of electrons and protons as being like little spheres, all right? even though they're not. But it's just a good analogy to have in your head. Um, and electrons actually behave like spinning tops. Okay? Um, as an analogy, right? And they're, they're not actually spinning per se. Um, but spin, they possess, so electrons possess a quantum property. Okay, it's a property called spin. Quantum means on the scale of atoms and subatomic particles. That's why I've put the word quantum there. Spin. Okay, it describes, it basically describes the angular momentum. Angular momentum. Okay, it's like a measure of the rotational momentum of an object. Okay, in other words, how fast the object of something, some mass uh, is spinning. Okay, that's a good analogy. And so the electron is spinning. You can think of it as like a spinning top in uh, spin up and spin down, uh, and spin up and spin down states, depending on which way you spin it. Um, so far, so good. So electrons seem to behave like spinning tops um, down on the microscopic level. But here's where it starts to get strange. Um, before measuring the spin state of an electron or any other particle for that matter, the electron exists in a state where it's spinning both up and down simultaneously. In other words, the electron is in a superposition. Okay, superposition means combination. Okay, there's different ways to define superposition. Best way I can define it is combination uh, of both spin up and spin down. Okay, it exists. It's spinning in both directions. Okay, before you measure it, before measurement. Okay, this is when we do experiments, this is what we find. Um, well, some people might ask, how is this possible? How can it be spinning both up and down? Well, I'll be illustrating this in the next video. But for now, just take it as a fact that electrons and any other quantum particle for that matter, they seem to do multiple things simultaneously at the same time. 